Okay, let's talk about multiplying fractions. And here I have two examples, and this first one is uh, hopefully uh, pretty easy for all of you out there. We're going to multiply uh, fractions that involve uh, numbers, and then we're going to do another problem that um, involves variables as well as numbers. Okay, so this is still, we're multiplying uh, fractions, but of course we're going to have to know what to do with these variables, and this is where Probably most of you are looking at this and be like, okay, I'm not quite sure. You know, I know how to do this, but I'm not sure how to do this. Now, in algebra, you definitely have to have mastery of fractions. And, um, uh, you know, the way you learn fractions is to first focus on learning fractions with just numbers, okay? Uh, because the same concepts or principles or steps are involved when you work with fractions with variables, okay? Now, technically in algebra, Fractions with variables are called rational expressions, but that's, you know, we don't need to really overly concern ourselves with the description. We just need to know how to deal with fractions. Now, what do you need to know about fractions beyond multiply them, uh, beyond multiplication of fractions? Well, we need to know how to multiply. We need to know how to divide. We need to know how to add. We need to know how to subtract. We need to know how to find the LCD. And when you're uh, learning fractions in algebra, okay, things like this, make sure you start here and you master fractions with numbers. So I have tons of videos in my pre-algebra play, uh, playlist on fractions uh, that I think, you know, for some of you out there are still a little bit unsure about your fraction ability. And, you know, you, you'll be shocked, okay, especially like with finding the LCD of reducing fractions. Most students think they know fractions better than they actually do. So it's definitely worthy of a good review for you to uh, review fractions and make sure you know them 100%. But we're gonna just use these two example problems to kind of reinforce something when it comes to um, reinforce the basic concept of, of multiplying fractions, okay? So we're gonna get to this in just one second, but first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm gonna leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, very briefly, briefly, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. I focus on middle school, high school, and college math. So my courses range from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. I also have a ton of test prep courses. So if you're taking any kind of test that involves math, so that would be like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, ASVAB, ACUPLACE or CLEP exam, uh, an EOC exam, uh, maybe a teacher certification exam, you get the idea. I can help you pre uh, prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, I have a great comprehensive homeschool curriculum. You can check that out as well. And hopefully you don't need any notes because you should be taking awesome math notes. And if you are not, okay, I'm going to tell you after decades of teaching mathematics, this is where you need to start improving. If you improve your notes, everything else is going to get better. But if you don't have any notes to study from, you can use my notes. I'm going to leave a link or links to all my notes in the description of this video. All right, so let's get into uh, multiplying fractions, and we're just gonna focus on these two problems. We're not gonna do a ton of problems. I'm really gonna hi uh, highlight um, what you need to be thinking about, especially when uh, you're dealing with uh, fractions with variables. Okay, so let's go down here and start off with this lovely basic fraction problem. And uh, the multiplication of fractions, are it's awesome because it's like the easiest thing you could possibly do. So when you're multiplying fractions, the way it goes, the rule is we multiply the respective numerators, okay? And we're gonna put that over the product of the respective denominators. So what do I mean by that? So here we have two fifths times three fourths. So this is gonna be equal to two times three. Okay, I'm multiplying the numerators. And then I got to multiply the denominators. That's five times four. Of course, this will be equal to six over 20. And we are done, but not quite because we can reduce this. Okay, so two goes in this three, two goes in this 10. So that's three tenths. Okay, now uh, a lot of you would have been like mm, uh, thinking, well, two, I can, uh, let's go, let me just erase this real quick. And um, I'm sure a lot of you are like, now oh, I know how to deal with fractions here. Like two can go into this four, two. And now when you cross cancel and there's nothing there, there's really a one. So that's one times three. Of course, that is going to be three, right? One times three. We're kind of basically reducing as we go. And then five times two is 10. And there is our answer right there. Or you can go, oh, that's two. There's a two down here. So that leaves me with a two, et cetera, et cetera. So again, you know, I don't want to focus on uh, reducing or cross canceling, but that is part of what you need to be doing when you are multiplying fractions. Okay. So don't ever just leave 
uh, the product of two fractions unreduced or unsimplified because your teacher will probably take off some points and you might end up with a little, you know, sad face. Okay. So make sure you fully reduce your problems. Okay. Now, again, uh, on how to cross cancel, uh, reducing fractions. I have tons of videos on fractions in my pre-algebra playlist. So you want to follow through with that. But just as a quick review, this is all we need to do to multiply fractions. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at this problem here. All right, now, how do I multiply this thing? Well, it's the same um, idea, okay? Our numerator is gonna be the product of all this, all this stuff right here. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So that's gonna be three a squared. So let's just write that out, three a squared times an a to the fourth. That's my numerator. And my denominator will be this stuff, five y, okay, times, 2y to the negative third power. All right, so at this point, you know, for the most part, this probably makes sense to most of you out there. You're like, okay, no, I mean, this is like what we're doing with the previous problem. We're just multiplying the numerators and denominators. But the main uh, confusion for a lot of students is what do we do with all these variables now? All right, so the first thing we need to do, and let me go ahead and just uh, write this a little bit closer so we got a little more room to work. All right, let's talk about this. Let's start in the numerator. So we have three a squared and a to the fourth. Well, to do these type of problems like this, okay, these type, you know, these problems right here, you need to know the properties of exponents. Okay, you need to know how to work with powers and exponents. And um, I just, well, I have multiple videos on this in my algebra and pre-algebra playlist, but you got to know these properties. Okay, and there's like five or six of them. Uh, how to deal with uh, the product, um, how to multiply uh, powers, how to divide powers, how to take a power of a power, negative powers. You need to know this, okay? If you don't know the properties of exponents, you're not going to be able to handle these type of problems, okay? But let me just explain this one particular property that will come in uh, handy here. And it's something we can learn, and I'll just write it out here, a to the m times a to the n is equal to a to the m uh, plus n. So this rule is when you're multiplying powers, okay? And that's what we're doing here. I'm taking this power a squared and I'm multiplying it with um, uh, a to the fourth and I'm also multiplying it by a three. But you can see here I have a, uh, this has a as its base, okay, this bottom number, and this has a as a base as well. So the, uh, the rule says, what we're going to do is we're going to add the exponents. So that's going to be 2 and 4. So this is going to be 3 times a, and 2 plus 4 is 6. That's going to be equal to 3 times a to the 6. So this is an illustration of how we need to use the properties of exponents uh, to do this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the denominator. And right here, just to be clear, this 5y, that's really y to the first power. Okay, so go ahead and um, you can apply the same property right here that we just used to this situation. Okay, so what do you think the answer is gonna be? Well, first, we're gonna multiply the respective numbers, so that's gonna be five times two, that is 10. And now I have y to the first and y to negative three, so that's gonna be what? Um, the same base, they're y's, okay? It's not a y and another variable, it's y and y, so I can apply this property, so it's gonna be y uh, to the first plus negative three. Okay, that's what this rule is saying right here. So that's going to be y to the 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2, y to the negative 2 power. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just end the problem here. We typically don't want to leave um, our uh, variables to negative powers. Okay, we could simplify this further. But I want you to look uh, that we cannot reduce 3 over 10. So if we could reduce the number part of this, we would do so. And uh, we can kind of continue to simplify this if we wanted to. But if you got this answer, then that's very, very good. But this is an illustration of when you're multiplying fractions in algebra, you need to know these properties of exponents. You need to know a lot about powers, okay? Because we're obviously, um, you know, we're working beyond numbers, but you also need to know how to work with basic arithmetic, okay, of fractions. So fractions, again, is one of these um, areas that I think a lot of students um, think they uh, 
know better than they actually do, okay? Especially when it comes to things like adding and subtracting fractions, finding the lowest common, uh, common denominator, etc. So you definitely want to check out uh, my uh, videos and my pre-algebra playlist because I give you a lot of uh, other little uh, secret techniques on how to add and subtract fractions, stuff that you're, it's going to be like gold, math gold for you as you study algebra. Okay, but if this video was a good little review for you, well then that was the whole idea behind it. Please consider smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, hopefully you'll consider subscribing a bit on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus videos, basic to advanced mathematics on my channel. My goal is always, uh, I really try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. Nobody should be uh, family math. You know, if you're doing your part, taking great math notes, talking to your teacher. You know, if you need additional instruction, you like my teaching style, well, please take advantage of my videos. That's why I make them. And I am very, very passionate about what I do. I love teaching math. So uh, if you like my teaching style, again, I'm going to be posting new content for as long as I can make it. But my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.